Hey, it's Matt from the A-Team, and I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this using a spotlight. Today on 4-Minute Film School, we're showing you spotlight tips and tricks. Let's go. Spotlights have been one of the most common lighting tools for years now. You can find spotlights in all shapes and sizes. Traditionally, they've been tungsten lights, but lately, LED spotlights have become more and more common. Basically, a spotlight is a magnifying glass in front of your light and they're usually used to light things from afar, such as stage performances, because of their ability to throw light. But spotlights offer a lot of light shaping features that you can use to get a wide range of lighting effects. Today, we're gonna look at three different ways you can use a spotlight to light your scene. Let's check it out. So for our first setup, we're creating a soft light with a spotlight. And to do that, we have our 300X set to 2700 Kelvin mounted on our spotlight mount with a 19 degree lens, which is a pretty narrow lens. And the 2700 Kelvin color temperature really adds a sense that this light is coming from a household lamp. So spotlights are naturally a small light source, creating harsh edges onto your talent. So to achieve soft light, we introduced a bounce card, and we're using cutters to shape the light to the exact size as our bounce. This expands our point source light into a much bigger size. This is a great alternative to using a softbox because it's about the same size as a softbox, but it's taking up less room in case you're in a cramped space. The last thing we had set up is a layer of diffusion, and this is really helping soften the light hitting the talent's face. This is really just utilizing the same principle as a book light, since we're just bouncing the light and then diffusing that bounced light. So for our second light, we have the 300D Mark II with the Mini Dome II to act as our rim light for our talent. For this light, we also added CTO to act as another household lamp off camera. For our third light, we have the Aperture MC set to a warmer color temperature to act as a practical within our scene. This really just helps establish that all of our lights are supposed to be lit by household lamps. So for our last light, we have another 300D Mark II pointed at our background to spread the light and make it an even bigger light source. We also diffuse the light to avoid any hot spots. One thing to know is this light is daylight balance, which means it creates some nice visual color contrast within our scene. So let's take a look at that first setup put together. So for our second setup, we wanted to emphasize volumetric lighting. In this setup, we have our characters scrambling together trying to hide from something or somebody outside. So for that, we brought back the 300X set to 2700 Kelvin and also brought back the spotlight. We had also positioned the light as high as possible and then tilted it down as if this were set to, say, golden hour. For our second light, we brought back the 300D Mark II with the Mini Dome and CTO. This light's sole purpose is to mimic a similar type of light coming from our spotlight, except a lot softer. Next, we added the grid and flag, and this is really just to focus the light just on the actor's face and not his chest. So to make this setup really work is to add a ton of fog. The fog mixed with our spotlight created really nice beams coming through our window. So let's take a look at that. So for our last setup, we have our character looking out a window bird watching. In this scenario, his house is surrounded by green fields, maybe trees, a bunch of nature. So to achieve this look, we added the 300X once again, set to 5500 Kelvin for a more daylight appearance. We really wanted to add texture to the scene, so we added a gobo with the tree texture to really add some dynamic shapes on the character's face. Next, we have the 300D Mark II with the mini light dome with a greenish yellowish gel layered on top, just to emphasize light bouncing around maybe trees or grass. For our third light, we added another 300D Mark II with a similar green gel being diffused and bounced. And this is really just to fill the background with a very similar light to our key light. Our last light is an Aperture MC set to a greener bluish tint. And all this is doing is highlighting the tree, adding some visual intrigue. So let's take a look at that last setup put together. Time for a recap. 
When lighting with spotlights, there are three things to keep in mind. First, you can use spotlights to bounce light from afar. Don't let the hard light of the spotlight limit you. By bouncing light, you can create a nice soft light in hard to reach places. Second, use haze to accentuate the hard light. By adding haze in your scene, the hard light created by the spotlights becomes more visible and creates visual interest in your scene. Third, use gobos to add texture to the lighting. Many spotlights can be used with gobos to create shapes in your lights. These can create unique designs to the actor's face or in the scene itself. Comic question of the week, how would you light a scene only using spotlights? Comment below with your setups for a chance to win an Aperture M9. Also, while you're there, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more tutorials. I've been out with the A-Team. Thanks for watching 4-Minute Film School, and happy shooting.